numbers closer to the median? What numbers did you pick? Uh, 420, 410, 400, 360, and 100. So you are now having a smaller standard deviation because you're keeping your numbers closer to the median, 134. Can someone get even closer or a smaller standard deviation? Yes, Julian? What did you get? Seven? How did you get a standard deviation of seven? <laughs> okay, and so what numbers did you use? 410 and 390. Great. Can anyone even get closer than that? <laughs> yes. 1.4. What number did you use? Just one. one less. Just one less. We want to make sense with the trust. So, can anyone get a standard deviation of zero? Yes, Janet, how can you get a standard deviation of zero? All numbers being the same. If somehow everyone thought that the answer would all be the same, you would then get a standard deviation or the average distance from the average would be zero. Very good job. So I like that activity because I think it's getting you to think about what is the standard deviation and how do you, what does it mean, how do you interpret it? What would that make that graph look? Perfect question. So let me bring that up so you can see what that looks like. Or you tell me. And then I want you to think about the earlier part of class. So let me bring this up here. It's going to take a minute or low, I imagine. Okay. Felipe says, what would that graph look like? What would something look like if there's a standard deviation of zero? Perfect. Vertical line versus symmetrical versus approximately normal. So you said you put 400, 400, 400, 400. If you do a dot plot of that, what would that look like? Just a vertical line. And so a standard deviation zero doesn't deviate from the mean. You're not going to have guesses above or below. They're all going to be at that same uh, point. Is that what you were saying, imagining? So if I give you this graph, you would say C has the lowest. There's a standard deviation of zero. What about A and B? Explain why. Why would B have the lowest and A have the highest? So if you have more data, is that going to lower or increase? How, what's the formula that you used yesterday? You divide by n minus 1. What are you would divide in option A? You would divide by 4 minus 1. 5 minus 1, you divide by 4. What are you going to divide this by? 7 minus 1. Which one would get you a smaller number? Dividing by six, you get a smaller number. And so if you divide by a smaller number, you're going to get a smaller answer. And so your standard deviation will be uh, affected that way. I want to take advantage of the fact that Ms. Jenna spent her time here with us and kind of bring her into the conversation because I want this project to move forward with the community at some point actually putting this out. Uh, do you want to share some of the information so we start thinking about our surveys that you brought? Or do you want to get feedback on what you saw with the questions? Or do you want to just maybe, I know we all have like five, six minutes, you want to bullet some points and say maybe this might be a good direction. What do you guys think? So we kind of go back and forth. Yes. Um, so I brought over some like logistical documents from the city of Chicago that if you all want to maybe look through and kind of study. There also is one that I forgot to bring, but it's a traffic study that the company did during the time of the proposal for the project. So I think that will be really helpful for us to understand what it is that they studied traffic-wise already 
Um, were they counting trucks or were they counting cars? Were they counting both? And then did they think about the proposed number of trucks that are going to go in after the expansion is done? Because I gave you all two numbers the first day that I came in. After the original expansion, it's going to go up 500 trucks a day in and out. After three years of the opening of the new warehouse and the manufacturing building, it'll go up to about 750, close to 800 trucks every day. Um, so I think that would be really helpful for us to understand in what traffic studies they do, how they estimate these numbers. Because I think the questions that you all came up with is really, really good. Um, like how many children live with you? We have statistics right now that are showing us that about 25% of children living in Little Village have asthma already. So how is it that these trucks are going to um, affect the health of not only children, but community members at large, elders, and everyone in between, right? So it's really important to kind of start off. I can bring in more information on that too, because um, there's been different studies that have been happening. But that's the most recent number that I found, was the 25%. Um, I also want to share more information with Mr. Venegas into, in regards to the company themselves. Because um, we do have a lot of information on them that I think will be helpful for you all thinking what questions you want to use at the end. Um, so for example, we do know that they are the third largest manufacturer of uh, household products in the world. Um, we have information that shows us like a like an infographic of all the brands that they own and all the brands that they manufacture um, that I think will be really helpful because I know we were talking a little bit earlier with somebody that have noticed more Unilever brand branding on their products. So if we get a little bit more um, knowledgeable of the products, I think that will be helpful for when you design your survey and you kind of know, okay, yeah, this product and this product and this product. So I think if we familiarize ourselves with that, it will be um, more successful. Let me see. Thanks for bringing all this because I think this actually yeah. gets us to actually thinking. Based on what you just heard, do you then think about what are the questions that you need? You just heard about a traffic study that's been done. I didn't know that. That's used to me. You just heard about the actual products that are produced. What information do you want specific? that you think would help you complete your assignment of rewriting your survey questions? What information do you need? Because part of this, I'm going to go back and say, we did an activity today, let's rewrite our questions. Based on what you just heard from her, what information do you need to be able to do a better job to make clear questions, unbiased questions, and targeted the right community member questions? Yes, good. Um, maybe other communities would experience with that? Yeah, and that's a really, really great point. Um, so us at Advejo, we did some investigating on this company, Unilever, and we found that they had extensive, horrible history, not only with their workers, but um, with their environment. So we found that in India, they had very, very horrible conditions for their workers, and they're also, they were also using child labor. We found that in Vietnam, Vietnam, um, they were paying people like very, very low wages. They were temporary jobs. So also, I know that there was a question around temporary jobs. What are temporary jobs? Who are they available for? Um, we know that Little Village has a big number of undocumented people. Are, the, are temporary jobs good for undocumented people? Do they apply for undocumented people? So thinking about those different things. Um, and most recently, in a small town in India, it's called Kodaikanal, India, Unilever had a mercury company, a mercury plant, and they were making thermometers. They had absolutely no training for their workers. A lot of their workers um, are sick right now, and a lot of them actually ended up passing away because there was no protocol, there was no safety measures, they were getting paid really low. They started a huge campaign um, and we reached out to each other, so connecting bridges around this one company. They actually put enough pressure on the company and they are paying a lot of the workers and the workers' families money for like medical bills, funeral costs, and just 
Um, there's a spe specific word for it. Mm, like compensate, workers' compensation. Um, so that's one of the most recent things that we know too. So I think the more information that we can collect from this company, the more knowledgeable you will be and the more comfortable you will be conducting the surveys, right? Because then you'll know exactly what you're talking about. If people have questions, then you'll kind of know a little bit more about why this is important and why you guys are doing the surveys too. Global perspective, I didn't even yeah. think about this. Uh, for homework tonight, I want you to finish question four here. And then uh, make sure your warm-up is done. We didn't have time at the beginning of class. And make sure you do the last homework on the syllabus day seven. I'll post that on the website. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Have a great evening.